Hi, I'm Emily Leifer, and this is the second video for Museums and Public Memory. I didn't get a chance to go to a Martin Luther King Day celebration over the weekend, so I went to the MFA. The first gallery that you get to when touring the permanent collection of the MFA is the, is the African Gallery, where they have different different objects from all, from all over the different regions of Africa. And a lot of the objects are masks. And it, the display really does a good job of of combining Stephen Greenblatt's ideas of resonance and wonder. Um, the wonder is definitely kept intact by the way they are displayed, that is, in glass cases on with an off-white background on off-white pedestals, just sort of seem to be floating so that you first you first notice them as, as objects themselves and as their beauty or interest, textual, visual. But um, what adds to the resonance part, which is more, more than usual, is that there were pictures beneath beneath the um, masks, in addition to the text, showing um, people wearing the masks with the rest of the with the rest of the costume that they would wear while doing doing the ritual performance or whatever they happened to use that mask for, and I thought that really gave the gave the masks um, resonance. And I mean, in a in a more complex way that this the MFA achieved this is around um, around the museum on different on different objects they would have a um, a separate plaque. This is art with a past, and it would just sort of explain the provenance of that object and the story of how it came to the MFA. And I think that's probably a sign of a like a more progressive movement of museums towards trying to find more more progressive ways of displaying things. Another another issue of resonance of wonder that I found interesting was in the um, in the Egyptian wing there was this dress this beaded dress from a from a recently excavated tomb and the the dress was made of the actual even though it was reconstructed the beads were the actual beads that they found which were severely severely faded and in the in the text it explained that the beads were of course originally m these beautiful blues and whites and all these colors and I sort of wondered what, what I w the merits would be of having a reproduction with those colors as opposed to the real beads with with not the original colors um, so I guess there's less of the wonder but more of a feeling of, of resonance that this this is a real object that's sort of it doesn't hasn't traveled through time un untouched but is but is reached here very much touched, especially, you can especially get that sense from the photograph that is next to it of where the beads were found, which is it's this picture of this decaying skeleton um, with the, of, this, of this female Egyptian with the beads just sort of clumped up on her chest from where they were left from the dress while all the threads disintegrated. And I also thought that really gave the object a, a tangible history and really um, brought about uh, an identification with with the owner of of that dress and that they were a real person who lived at a real time. Also, one of the things that I find interesting about the MFA is in the, the Roman wing, there's a reconstructed Roman floor, and I think that another way that the MFA is really trying to look to the future in its um, display techniques is that in um, addition to having the actual the actual floor reconstructed, they have a video showing the, the process of how it was reconstructed. It has a, a schematic map of where the floor was taken from its original place so you know exactly where it was. And it has a video. Uh, it has a video showing the beginning to the end of the uh, restoration process, which I thought was really, um, really good to know that these things don't just appear; that they're that they were actually constructed to l from a certain way, and they were taken from a specific place and moved to this new location. So that was that was my trip to the MFA and how it has to do with um, Stephen Greenblatt's resonance and wonder.